All right, guys, I'm in the middle of a project. It's a, a commission for um, for somebody that actually is well-known. So it, uh, it's a good chance to get a little bit of exposure um, from some of the most wanted rich and famous, perhaps. But anyway, uh, making uh, fireplace cranes, actually two of them, one for each side. Um, first time I've done this. Um, I don't have all the details as far as uh, the dimensions of, of the swing and all that right now. I'm working it right now. All I'm working on right now. All I'm working on is uh, the brackets that go into the fireplace. Let me kind of draw up what 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 we have in mind at least, and then we'll go from there. All right. So uh, again, I don't have the the full dimensions yet, but uh, supposedly we have some like a five foot fireplace, a nice big fireplace. Um, he wants brackets to come out. Uh, some type of arm that's going to come out with a hook on it and uh, I think what we're going to end up doing is that the arms a little longer than I want it to be uh, put a hook on it we're going to put a little detail in here like this and I might actually put a little detail in here like this I'm not exactly sure what the uh, what the design is going to be I'm not sure of this dimension what's um, at all what the spacing is going to be vertically and I'm not sure of what the uh, the reaches we have to do one for both sides one for each side so when we end up we're gonna have you know something like that love my artwork now well that's the plan anyway um, what I'm using for the brackets a half inch by two it's pretty hefty I'm thinking a big a big fireplace big you know display piece like that that uh, we want a little extra extra whip mass to that the issue that we have, though, is this is the face of the fireplace, uh, and then this is the fireplace in here. He's going to mount the, these brackets into the wall, and what he's asked me to do is come back and give give a four inch return for the pivots. Mount them in the wall, four inch return for the pivots, so that we can swing. Here's the arm, right? We can swing the arm into the fireplace, or to store it, we can swing the arm back out. Uh, out to the outside. So I've actually made up a couple of the brackets. So that's kind of what we're looking, what, we, what he's asking for. So this will go into the wall. This part, about one inch, will be exposed and out. This will be the hinge point. Uh, he asked me to put a pin in there because he's going to mount that into the masonry when he when he pours the uh, the uh, fireplace. So I have one set already done. I got another set. All forged up and uh, cleaned up. I'm going to go back and put them back in the forge, uh, hammer it up a little bit just to give it a little bit of age and rusticness. As you see there, rusticness. That might not be a common word, but you see, I want I want it to look rough. I want it to look old. So just the part that's going to be exposed, and then we're going to wax that up. The rest of it will leave the way it is. So I'm sure you guys want to see how I made all this this stuff. Um, what I really wanted to do was old school. Uh, and actually forge this 90, but there's just no way that I can do that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's possible, but with, with, I wasn't about ready to take half inch by two and uh, try to do a, uh, an upset corner on that. So what I ended up doing was I created this piece here, drifted the, the hole, and then welded, uh, butt welded that on. So I hate the fact that, you know, that's not a, kind of an authentic old school, but the rest of it's going to be... Um, so you, you kind of missed the forging part, but here's the scoop. He's going to take these brackets and install them, and I need to continue on with the design of the, the swing arm uh, or the crane part, and I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that. I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, put the arms in and drop a pin between the two of them, which would be the easiest thing to do, uh, but I don't know how much overhead space I have. Or um, if I'm going to take the arm and have it come in at an angle and then set in both where the arm comes in at an angle and then sets in both holes. Um, so I, I kind of, I, I'm not sure, it's kind of like a two-stage process. Um, so what I'm going to do right now, I have to finish up these, get them uh, waxed and hammered, but I'm going to go ahead and create another set of these ends, and I'll use this, this piece to do that, um, because when I'm, when I'm fabricating the, the, the crane part, the arm, uh, I want to be able to set this up with the same dimensions that they have and make sure that if I if I do the tip the tip method in that it works or um, if I do if I use a hinge pin it works so we'll go ahead I'll show you what I did to create the uh, the drifted holes 
I won't put the 90 on because I don't need the 90 for my setup. And, uh, and then once that's done, we'll come back and we'll start working on the crane. I'm not sure what the delay will be in between, but we'll, that's what we're going to do anyway. All right, uh, since I need two, two, two parts to make this work, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a mark in, uh, one inch in, centered, basically. And I'll do that on both ends. Um, and that's where my holes will be now uh, old school you'd punch the the original holes out and then drift them I'm just gonna drill a hole through there since I'm working with mild steel that's step one step two high tech are we in the frame we're in the frame step two I'm gonna go ahead and just draw myself around on this until I'm happy with it just to give me some guidelines on the grinder I'm going to round that off with the grinder. I don't like how that looks. I want to be back here a little bit more. That's better. Um, and again, I could hammer that, but just for the few seconds of grinding time, I don't want to distort the width too much. I do want it rustic, but I also want it... Um, a little bit symmetrical too. So again, a compass or something like that would work, but shit, there we go. So I'm going to punch the holes in there now, we'll grind off these ends, and we'll take it to the forge and drift it. Alright, a little time on the drill press, a little time on the, the grinder, and uh, I got the basic shape that I want, I can finish the rest off hammering. Put about a 3 8 inch, inch hole, um, and that'll allow me to, to get a little distortion. I mean, I want it, I want a little, you know, I want a little distortion as that thing gets drifted out. So the, I, I like the way that looked. And again, what I'm really doing right now is, is reproducing pieces that I can use to fit the, uh, the arms when I'm done. So I need to do it the exact same way. So we'll get over to the forge and we'll drift these things out. Alright, so the first thing I did when I, when I made the originals, is I made myself a drift. Uh, quite honestly, and you know, I, I've been asked to make some tools and I haven't made a whole lot of punches and drifts yet. Um, especially from, from raw material. So quite honestly, this was made out of a uh, three-quarter inch mild round. Um, I don't know for sure what the exact dimensions are going to be. I'm kind of building this as we go um, because of the design and, and, the, and, and the, the, the fact that I don't have all the information. So I just created this drift. You know, I, I drifted out four holes with it. Uh, it, worked, it worked fine. I did upset it a little bit at the top here, so I'm a little wider than the, the three-quarter in case that's the size of the pins that I did decide to use. Um, rounded off the top. So the point is that we made up a quick drift to make this happen. All right, for the first drift, drop that drift in there. Turn around while we still have a little heat. Lift it from the back side, try to keep it straight. For now, so we start with that size. We're a little bigger now. Back in about three, three heats, I think, is what I've been doing on these. All right, we'll go for that second drift. Make sure you look rustic. Ooh, this probably getting pretty hot there. I think we got time to cool down a little. One more, we'll be done. Now, 
I just gonna hammer this up a little bit, just give it that look I want. And then we'll pop it back in there. And finish drifting. My chains out of the way. Get out of the way, chains. You're wasting my time. This one side. We'll flip it over. Run it through again just to make sure. There we have it. I'm going to flip it over since I had to hit it one more time. Usually that drift just flies right out of there. Good enough. Now what I've been doing, because I don't know for sure if I'm going to cant in that this, this, the, the wrist pin there, I'm putting a little taper on it with another punch. Just a little bit to give me a little bit of room to play if I need it. Come on now, you're fighting me, camera. We'll do both sides. And that way if I have to tip in a pin from below, I got a little more room to play with on the outsides. That's the hope anyway. Just to make sure I didn't distort anything, we'll slide this thing back through one more time and it goes through just fine. So there you have it. Drift it out. See if I can get both holes in. Here we go. One side to the other, all right? One size to the other. And uh, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to turn around and do this one now. And then we'll nip these things off. And these, again, will be my test brackets for when I'm fitting the arm. I'll bring you along for the second one just in case something different happens. I doubt it will. But you never know. You never can tell. Can't hold that. That's pretty hot. That's not bad right there. Now this piece is a little warmer than it was before. My end's done up here. This part of it. That's not bad at all. Enough to get the punch out anyway. Just so you know, in between each one of those, I'm quenching that punch. Set it. I made it a mild three-quarter round, so I'm pretty damn impressed with the way where I'm whoop with the way that son of a bitch is performing anyway. So let's go to number two. Looks nice and warm to me. Get on there. Test brackets <coughs> were made exactly like the delivery brackets. Good enough for 
me. Everything looks well. Stay on it. Everything's straight enough. Let's throw this punch back through to make sure. Yep, we're good. And there we have it. Now what I'll do is I'll just cut off what I think I need for uh, for the uh, the test brackets, and we'll be on our way. Now what I did. Before, is I, I ended up measuring four inches back from the back of the hole. We went a four-inch return, and that's where I cut it. So let me kind of walk you through that, and then I can bring it back and show you the finishing that I do on the brackets I've already made. I just kind of walk you through what I did. Again, this is step two in the process. That's what we're trying to make. So again, we wanted a four-inch return off that thing. So I measured from the back of the hole to four inches on both sides of these. Cut them off, ground them so that they're exactly the same size, and then I just tapered them and butt welded them right onto the uh, this arm piece. After cleaning up, it gives me that. I had a hole drilled in here for this pin. Here's the finished one. Alright, so I can go ahead and just tack in a, a half inch pin when I'm ready. But what I need to do now is turn this shiny unfinished one into that. And to do that all I'm going to do is take it to the uh, forge Heat it up and uh, hammer it a little bit, get some of the grind marks disappearing with some hammering marks, and then um, wax it. That's what we'll do next. Right, for this step, I don't need it super hot. All I'm going to do is blend in some of my work, put some hammer marks in the parts that are going to be exposed. I'll let that cool a little bit. So what I want to do is, <coughs> all I have is uh, plain beeswax today. I'm not all out of my other stuff. But if I wax this now, just to show you, it's so hot, it's just going to burst into flames. And although that's not horrible, it, it ends up burning off more than than it actually um, coats. So I'm going to like I like to let it cool a little bit, just to the point where it's almost ready to stop. Uh, flashing. So while that's cooling, I'll get working on the other one. Pretty cool. You lose, you lose your eyebrows that way, though, that's for sure. I'll let that one cool for a minute. Get the other one done. Get that other one in there soaking. Let's see if we cool down enough to keep it from flashing. Pretty darn close. So I don't mind, I don't mind that right now. It'll cool a little bit more. Just got to make sure that you keep everything flat otherwise you end up with patterns in the wax what I'll do quite often just to make sure the patterns don't show up is wipe that off All right. make sure I get the edges again all I need to do is the part that's exposed it looks pretty good already we'll just put another coat on here that cook in a little bit. I keep waxing, if I keep wiping with the same spot or the same part of the cloth, I'll be waxing and wiping at the same time. Wax and lights off. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Actually it's looking damn good. I think I'm good right there. We'll leave it just like that. That one's still a little bit hot. Not terribly hot though. Go ahead and wipe that off. See if we get that. I'm liking it. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Let's do one more just for get some grams just for shits and grams 
on. She must burn on that one. She's a little warm still. Nice dark color. I like it. Good. Alright, these are the two that we just did. Um, and this is my test bracket. I haven't cut it yet because I don't, I don't know what the dimensions are yet. But uh, all both brackets are ready to go. Again, these go into the fireplace like that. And then a pin or whatever my swing arm will be between these these two holes. So we'll call this part one of the video. I'll make it a two part because I'm sure that the the, um, the actual crane is going to be pretty damn cool to watch. What I plan on doing with the crane, I'm going to show you over here, is uh, I plan on oops, a little um, back you up a little bit here. So I got some inch by inch. And when I go ahead to create the crane, I'm going to make myself a swage, a spring swage. I'm going to round off a part of this to somewhere around three quarters, right, or a little less, on the top for about maybe four inches or so. This is what this is the, the plan. I this is what I hope I do with the project. All right, so I'm going to round that off, and then wherever the bottom is, <coughs> uh, I'm going to round off maybe an inch or so. And what's going to happen is we'll tip that first rounded part up into the top bracket and then set the second rounded part down into the bottom bracket. Now my objective is to put a, ten, a tenon with another one inch piece coming off to the side and that one inch will be my, uh, my horizontal which I'll taper off into a, into a hook. But uh, I'd really like, never done it before, to put a tenon through here and then put that one inch through this one inch. And, uh, and actually, you know, I think that'll look really, really good. So there's a lot to do with that project, or at least what I think the project's going to be. Uh, we'll make that another video. So pretty simple today. Uh, just making the brackets for the uh, fireplace crane. In reality, the only forging we did today was uh, drifting out that, that hole out of some half inch stock. And again, I used three quarter inch mild steel uh, piece of mild steel as a, as a drift and it seemed to work. So I'll catch you hopefully soon with the rest of the project. Um, and I got a foresight check. I know you guys, <laughs> a lot of people are hating me, but I'll get back to you. All right, stay tuned.